Happy New Year. Hope all of you had a wonderful New Year's Eve and having a good day today. Uh, of course, you won't be watching this on New Year's Day. It'll be a day or so after that, but I hope that you have a, a wonderful 2024 and everything that you need and want for you and your family, that it all comes true, that it all works out. So I'm enjoying kind of a leisurely day today, even though I am going to cook a traditional meal that we cook on New Year's Day. Um, it's funny I say we cook it because I didn't actually grow up cooking this or even eating it. I didn't even know about it until I was grown and I was riding for the blind pig and the acorn and I discovered that many people on New Year's Day, they eat black eyed peas, some type of green, and some type of pork. Um, some type of pork and that's supposed to make you healthy, wealthy and wise for the coming year. And I remember uh, when I first found out that, read it, you know, found out it was a real tradition, it just wasn't in my family, that I told Granny and Pat because I wanted to see if maybe they had heard other people say it and maybe they just didn't observe it or something. And Granny was so funny, she said, well, no wonder we've always been poor. So that was, she was just joking, of course. Uh, we were poor maybe monetarily, but not in all the ways that matter. Anyway, that's what I'm going to cook today. Actually, Matt's going to help me. He's going to cook the black-eyed peas. I've got them been soaking overnight over here in a bowl. He's going to cook them on the wood stove, so I don't even have to worry about them. And then we're going to do mustard greens. We really like mustard greens. Um, a lot of people ask us about collards. I think collards are okay, but we just prefer mustard greens, so that's what we're going to do. I couldn't find any. I wanted hog jowls, and I couldn't find any, so we're just going to have like some cut tenderloin, fried tenderloin, pork tenderloin. We're just going to do that. Of course, we're going to have cornbread. Last night, uh, not really for New Year's Eve, but just for a, uh, my great niece's birthday party, we had at my brother Steve's house. So we all got together, and we had a, had another great meal. My sister-in-law baked a turkey, and um, I took some sweet potatoes and some rolls. The rolls were all gone, but I brought the sweet potatoes back, so we have those, have some of them, enough for me and Matt and Katie to eat today. And then I'm also going to make a my yearly, every year, my I say my last hooray or hurrah of Christmas or the holidays is to make some cinnamon orange pull-apart bread. Now, I have a video about that. I'll link to that. I also have a video talking more in depth about that traditional New Year's meal, and I'll link to that too. So if you want to see it, it gives much more detail than I'll give today. Anyway, I'm going to get started on that, um, the orange pull-apart bread first because it has to, it's a yeast bread, so it has to rise. And I usually make it before uh, New Year's Day, but this year it just somehow, I just never did get it done. So I'm going to do that today. It's Matt's favorite dessert, he says. He's told me that in the last year. A lot of you, if you watch our videos, you remember I, because of your urging, I made it for him in July because I only usually make it at Christmas or, or in the days after Christmas. So he's going to, he's going to enjoy that. I was having my, my breakfast this morning very simple breakfast that I eat most mornings is um, Parmesan cheese. I love that. I usually eat either grapes or apples. This morning I had apples, maybe a piece of jerky, and then I drink a cup of broth. Uh, this morning I'm drinking chicken broth and beef broth mixed together. I like both. I like both of them. And I wish that we, we had enough like canned of our own on the shelf that I could just use my own. We do make broth sometimes if we have, you know, like after, after Christmas turkey or the Thanksgiving, Matt made wonderful turkey broth and we'll use that in soups. I try to, anytime I'm doing anything with chicken, if I'm making something, I use the bones and the chicken and make broth and put it in the freezer. But we use it mostly for recipes, not for drinking. Now, I was never someone that liked broth. It made me think of being in the hospital, you know, that's when they usually give you broth, the times that I've been in the hospital, and they'll, they'll bring you some, whatever meal they bring you, there'll be a little cup of broth, and I thought it was just terrible. But in the last year or so, Corey got me to drink in the broth, and again, like I said, I wish we made our own, but we don't. But the brand that she told me about is Kettle and Fire, Kettle and Fire. It's like an organic brand, really good, uh, supposed to be really great ingredients and really made really well and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I drink. And I really love the chicken and the beef. I love both of them. I probably, the chicken's probably my favorite just because it's more of a mild flavor. But I, that's usually my breakfast though, is a cup of the broth and some fruit, some cheese, and maybe a little, little jerky. And that holds me pretty good. Some of my favorite apples are Gala's and Fuji apples. I love those. I love a sweet, crisp apple. That's my favorite. I love the sweet, but I like it to be really crisp. Not mellow like Granny and Pap like theirs. 
but in the last few months, I found out about an Evercrisp apple. I don't even know what made me pick up one and decide I was going to buy it and try it. And I've just fallen in love with them. They're so sweet and they're so crisp. I really, really like them. So that's what I had this morning. Uh, I'm tempted by them all the day long just because I like them so much. I'm like Granny. Granny, I can hear Granny warning me. If you keep eating them like that, you're going to get foundered on them and then you're not going to like them anymore. So after I finish up my last two or three pieces of apple here and drink the rest of my broth, I'm going to get started on my bread so it can be rising. And then some other things I want to do today, um, just because it's I don't have a, much else on my schedule, which is really, really nice. I guess I'm going to start taking down some of my Christmas decorations, especially the tree. We love to put our tree up directly after Thanksgiving. Usually the following weekend we put the tree up. And we always, we try to have a live tree, and it's always really brittle by this time. We water it, of course, we make sure that it's, you know, has a lot of water, but it's just, it just always goes like that. But this year, it's even worse because we used a different type of tree, which is so, it was so beautiful. I'm, I'm still glad we used it. It was a Murray Cypress, but it has dried out even more than the uh, ones that we usually use. So it's, it's I'm, I'm afraid when we take all the decorations off of it and try to move it, every branch and every needle is just going to fall into the floor. So I'm, I really need to get that out of the living room. So I'm going to maybe work on that. As always, I need to I need to be fooling with my kefir water. I have it. I haven't made it in a week, so I have my jars. I've even got them in the bedroom in there. Uh, thinking about all the Christmas holiday people being here, I put them out of the way. So I need to bring them back in here and feed my kefir and also uh, make some, some new, we're out, we've drunk everything, so make some new kefir water. I think that will be all I do today though, that and, and the meal is going to be pretty simple. Like I said, Matt's going to make the black eyed peas. All I'll have to worry about is the greens and the uh, frying the little pork chops and the cornbread, which is I can do in my sleep. I've made cornbread so many times. So I think it's shaping up to be a really, really nice New Year day. Okay, I got the dough, got the dough together. That's the first step. The hardest part about this bread, it's not hard, it's just time consuming, is you've got to grate so much orange peel for it. It's a really, really soft dough too. It's really nice, really nice. But that's what takes so long. And you can see it's got so much in it. You can see the little, little specks all in it. And then you have more um, orange peel that you need for the filling and then also for the for the um, icing, I usually leave it out of the icing though, but I do use orange juice. That's what the recipe calls for both. So now I've got it in my greased bowl. I'm gonna cover it, let it rise for about an hour. I'll put the, the link to the video I told you about, but also where I found the recipe online. They probably even have a printable one that you can print out. It's so good. It is more time consuming than most of the kind of things like this that I make, but it's so worth it. It really is good. Matt says it's his favorite, but it is really good. One other thing I left out since I was telling you about my breakfast, you may not be interested or even care about it, but another thing that I do as soon as I eat is that I drink a glass of collagen, mix some in my, in my water. Miss Cindy got me to do that years ago. She just thought it'd be good for both of us. And at first I didn't like it. And I remember I told her, I said, I don't like how it tastes. And uh, she said, oh, I've tasted much worse than that. Like, you know, typically you're kind of being a baby about it. But anyway, I kept drinking it. And now today it doesn't even, I got used to it, it doesn't even bother me at all. But it's funny, she got me to drink it because she thought it'd be good for our bones and good for our skin and hair and all that. But, um, like maybe we used one she got it for us and we used one bag or maybe we used two bags i can't remember and then oh and she would always get it for us she was so good about doing stuff like that for me and then one day she asked me if i still drunk it and i said well yeah i do and she said well i can't tell that it did anything for me so i'm going to quit drinking it and i said okay but she said but if you want it i'll keep getting it and i said yeah i do i, I want it I, I think it helps so i want to i want to keep drinking it Anyway, so she's the one that taught me about it, even though it turned out that she didn't end up doing it herself. 
So now that I've got this done, I'm going to cover it, put it in a warm place, and then while I'm waiting to get started with the rest of my meal, it's not even dinner time yet, I think I'm going to go tackle that Christmas tree. So before I was going to tackle the Christmas tree, see what I could get done, I thought, well, I should go outside and see if any of our mustard greens are still there. We, I bought some just in case because I figured that those were too, too far gone. But I ended up with a whole, whole bucket full, whole uh, container full here. And then I went down to the onions and look, Matt and Katie, I got us some onions. Sweet. <laughs> cool. So that'll be good. This will be. I'll probably still mix some of the store bought ones with these, but at least some of them will be the ones from our garden. Cool. Mom. cool. Be smart lady. Just smart lady. You can see how brittle every little piece just breaks and they feel like needles. <laughs> so it's gonna be really fun getting it out. But I'm gonna start start removing all the as I remove them, I'm sure the pieces are just breaking off. So it's gonna be a real mess. It's always a mess though, but this year may just be worse than others. Isn't that the cutest? Look at Corey's little face. I'm cute too. You're cute too, Katie. <laughs> I have to find one of Katie. She's saying, I'm cute too. It's always more fun to put the tree up, of course, than to take it down. Just a part of it, though, that you have to. A lot of people don't take their trees. You can see how those are crazy. It's just shredding the tree. Uh, a lot of people don't take their tree down till old Christmas. If you don't know about old Christmas, I'll leave some links in the description below. I typically take mine down before this time usually just a few days after christmas i'm just ready for it all to be gone and i take it down but this year that just didn't happen granny almost always has and still does wait till at least after new year's because new year's day is paul's birthday so she always likes to leave it up till then That was a much harder task than any of us thought it would be. Don't you agree, Matt? Yeah, we'll be getting another one we on. Taking the tree down. It wasn't taking the ornaments off and all that. That was uh, fine, but it had just dried. It was just unbelievable the way it had dried. And then the mess it left once Matt carried it out. So yeah, I got a bunch of run up my shirt sleeve and I believe it cut me. Yeah, it's, it dried so hard it was like little needles. Like little needles. So now though, we've got that done. I'm glad we've got it done. Still got all my other decorations up, but at least that's, since it was getting so dry, at least that's done. So I'm gonna get ready to do my dough here. Get ready to actually do the next step of it. And I will, um, again, I'll put the website where I got the recipe and also the video where it shows how I made it. I think it was last year. So now that I'm gonna mix up my filling, which is butter and sugar, that wonderful orange zest that I got this morning. Make sure I get all of it. Don't wanna leave any of it since it was so hard to get it. And 
I knew I'd got it. There's my cinnamon. So I've got the cinnamon. I'm gonna stir that up and set it aside, and then I'll get started rolling out the dough. It's time for me to put the mustard greens on, so I'm going to give them a good wash. These are the ones from our garden. I can't believe there was this many left. I thought that we had took care of most of them, so this may be enough. I may not have to get any of the ones I bought, but I should have went up there and looked before I bought them. But I'm going to clean these good, and then I'll judge and see if I need to add any of the store-bought ones. The store-bought ones are prettier. Ours are kind of raggedy and small. But I know they'll taste really good because they were grew right outside our kitchen door. Normally I like to season my mustard greens with fat back, sometimes hog jowls or bacon or something like that. But today I'm just gonna use bacon grease. I'm just doing it really simply. I don't have any fat back or I'd use that. Now again, I have that video that I'll link to where I talk more about that, but I've just chopped them all up. And I did end up using the ones I bought at the store just because I know greens, it seems like you've got so much and then they cook down so much. So that's why I decided I better just for sure go ahead and use them all. So I'm gonna put in a big thing of bacon grease there. Add me some water and then I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And those should be really good. Everything's smelling good, getting ready for our for our wonderful New Year's Day meal this evening, supper. We'll be eating it for supper, but I got the orange bread out, so Matt's tempted, tempted by that. I've got to put the icing on it. I just eat that for supper. Oh, well, no, you can't. You want to eat the rest of the beans and stuff, don't you? Black eyed peas, not beans, but... I guess. It's gonna warm him up some coffee to go with it. I think we're gonna, we can't wait till after supper. We're gonna take a little piece and sit for a few minutes by the wood stove. Maybe we can entice Katie to eat a little piece with us. It's your favorite? It is. Let's see if I can get us some plate. the good part. Can you eat a whole big piece? What? Am I crazy? I'm gonna yeah, get you are some you of crazy? The, give me a spoon. We should have let it cool a little bit more. I don't know if me and Katie we might have a piece. I don't know though. That's what I was gonna do with the spoon. I guess that's a piece big enough for me and Katie. It's just so good. The best stuff that's ever been out right there. Yes. A whole lot of work to run it. Yeah, it's, I mean it ain't terrible, but it does take a take a while. But I'm worth it. Oh yes, you're worth <laughs> it. You're worth it for sure. I was going to make two, I should have, because it doesn't last long, but it just takes so long to grate the orange is the worst part. It just takes so long to do that, but I probably should have. You convinced Katie to taste some with us. Matt's got him some coffee. Katie, I'm sorry I didn't bring you nothing to drink. I no, didn't bring okay. me nothing to drink either. 
I actually have some water. We're really silly to eat this because I'm about to go finish supper, but. Mmm. It's so good. It's very good. I'll be the judge of that. Oh, you'll like it. Best stuff ever. I still want to try to do the okay, um, gracious. the recipe or the dough and do it with just cinnamon and butter and make cinnamon rolls out of it. It's just the best dough, don't you agree? My mm -hmm. goodness, yeah. It's just so soft and fluffy. It is soft and fluffy. I do like that. And you could make cinnamon orange rolls by doing it like this. I mean, you know, if you wanted to, but. Might good. Mm. It is very good. I like the crust. <coughs> you like it too? Just a crunchy part. I like the crust. <coughs> I was trying to think of some of the folklore that has to do with New Year's uh, Day or New Year's Eve, too. I have a video, I know, where I've talked about it a lot I can link to, but only ones that come immediately to mind is the, you know, the first first footer, the person that comes across your threshold is supposed to be a tall, dark-haired man, then you'll have good luck. I always thought, well, you could just orchestrate that and make sure, you know. It does kind of seem like you could you orchestrate You think so, that. yeah. Um, whatever you do on New Year's Day, you'll do the rest of the year. Which, I think I should have went hunting. <laughs> yeah. Or fishing. Well, you should be glad, though, that I'm cooking, so I'll be cooking the rest of the year. Well, that's good, yeah. That's, that'll do, especially if you cook stuff like this. Mm. That means I'll be playing with Binks all year. Hmm. Another one is you're not supposed to wash clothes, which I never. Yeah, I never remember not to do that. But you'll wash somebody out of your life. Maybe you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> no. <laughs> Starting to see into your master plan now. We well, become aware of your master plan. One that one of my friends taught me about. Uh, one of my friends I met online, actually, Susanna Holstein, Granny Sue, better known as Granny Sue. She come, her and her husband Larry come and stayed with us one time, and uh, we just really loved them. We still do. We hadn't seen them in a long time, though. Anyway, but every year they have like a, they would do a bonfire on New Year's Eve, and then like any kind of troubles or worries or whatever that had bothered you during the year, you'd write them down on a piece of paper and then throw them in the fire. And then, of course, they were they were gone after that. You, know, you could forget about them. Uh, in other words, burn them out of your mind. And we did that once or twice, didn't we, down here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and we just threw them in the wood stove instead of having a bonfire. I thought about it. Thought about getting Corey or Katie and Matt to do it, but. I don't know. Then I thought, I've had such, even with the sadness of this year, of 2023, I've had just been so blessed. I can't, I'll start crying so I can't talk about it. But even with that, I've just been so blessed that even the the bad parts, the good far, far outshines the bad parts. Mm -hmm. So, I feel that. I don't really feel like I have nothing I need to burn. I feel that too. No. I've been so blessed. If I complain, I'd just be ungrateful. Mm. And so much to look forward to in the new year. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Excited about our grandsons. And it's going to get busy. It's going to get busy. All kinds of crazy stuff to do. Even January is busy. It feels like there's a lot to do, so then I'm like, then we get to February. February is that month that feels like it just comes and goes in a flash. Yeah. So, wow, that's crazy. Lots of things, though, to look forward to, especially the grandchildren, but you know, garden stuff that we hope to do. 
Jim Casta and I are going to work on another book, so that's exciting. I'm going to work on my truck. Katie's going to work <laughs> on her truck, and you're you're um, excited about your enameling mm -hmm. and some other things you're working on in your shop. I need to do. I did a whole bunch of the enameling, and then I got slack on it. I need to do some more of it, but it's different. It's like one way it's faster, but in another way it's like. I guess because it's new, I have to think about it more. The other stuff I can just do without thinking. But I did buy, Lord, this was like months ago. And I bought the stuff to do it, watched the video, forgot how to do it. Now I have to watch the video again. <laughs> bought some silver tubing so I could tube set some faceted stones. Oh. Literally, that's, you know, you get all excited, you get your head wrapped around something, and then if you don't do it right when you were thinking of it. I'll have to try to go back and watch some videos and relearn what I'm going to do with that, but I think that'll be fun. What are you what excited you? about? You're going to eat that. Oh, you have Matt's <laughs> eye and Katie's stuff. Well, she's sitting there holding it. You can have the rest of it if you want. No, I don't. If you're going to eat it, eat it. But if you was not going to eat it, I'll let it's you not have going it. to waste. No, I mean, I won't let it. We won't waste it. I just have to eat little bits at a time. No, I'll just eat it. can only eat a little what are you excited about? You're excited this year as far as the garden goes. You'll be here every day instead of weekends and evenings. Let me stay ahead of it. Yeah, that'll make it a little easier as far as don't have to work so hard on the, on the one day off or whatever you've got. And you can just do a little bit along and it won't be as as much work. I will yeah. try to be crammed into one day. Right. And you're going to, I know That's you're nice. excited about fishing. Well, yeah. Yeah. Turkey hunting. Yeah. I'm even excited about fishing. I'm not sure how much fishing I'm going to be doing, but <laughs> if I go once, I'd be happy just to go one time. We probably should go pretty soon, even though it's cold and winter time. We should go just me and you, and in that way, My you could get raw. you could get the itch scratched before you're not able for a while. Yeah. Even if we don't catch nothing, it don't matter. Austin went a few go. days ago. He, and caught, he caught some. some he, he did. Said, yeah. I was surprised. I mean, it's cold, and but yeah, that'd be fun to go. Maybe pick a day that's not as bad. Of course, I'm looking forward to. I hope uh, that I get some snow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It is usually <laughs> the time we get most. The snow would be January, February. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll see. But anyway, Katie talking about cold made me think of that. You know, it's weird it flurried for the last few days, but it wasn't going to do anything. It, for one, it was just flurries, and for two, it was it's really not all that cold. I saw a cute video of Cousin Mark and Alec in the snow. Yeah, and, and he's he, in New Hampshire. New Hampshire, so they get big snows. They just keep snow all winter, of course. He's but. pulling a baby on a sled, and he's just smiling so big. Oh, he was Aww. having a ball. It was really cute. Really, really cute. <coughs> That's going to check on the black eyed peas and I'm going to go back up and I think I just need to do our cornbread and our, uh, fry the Here. tenderloin and we'll be ready to eat. He dresses. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It won't be no good by the time I let it sit here and sit here. Katie only eats a little bit at a time. If I want some more, I'll go back up here and get some. Plus, it's so good, but it's, it's rich. It is very rich. It's really you need rich. a big, tall glass of milk to go with it. Yeah. My goodness. It's really, really good, but I can, when stuff's really rich, you just have to eat it a little that's bit the best, That's the best dessert I have ever eaten. Bar none, and I eat lots of desserts, and a, I like lots yeah. of desserts. A few weeks ago, we uh, got that's to visit with some really friends good. and spend the day with them, and, and they have uh, dairy cows, and so they sent us home with a gallon of fresh milk. Oh my goodness, it was the best, wasn't oh, it? Yeah. So that's what we need with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. I just it didn't what I, last long. It was no. good. What I like about this is that orange, it's so fresh. It yeah, just, it brings so such fresh. a brightness to it. Yeah. Because you could do it with lemon. Lemon would be real good. I mean, I'm sure you do it with all kinds of stuff, but it does add a brightness. You're right. The mm -hmm. freshness. It really does. The orange just cuts through the sweetness somehow. Mm -hmm. But the texture of the bread is my favorite. The, it's so fluffy and soft. Yeah, I know. That is what makes That's really good. It's unreal. It I guess good. you're going to want me to make one in July again this year. Christmas in July. Like we did last year. <clears throat> Christmas in July. I'm thinking we ought to have another in about March. 
don't think so, Binks. <laughs> you wouldn't like it anyway, Binks. Uh -uh. Another one in the March. Yeah. yeah. I was going to make two, season. but then I once I got started, I got tired of grating oranges and quit. I guess you'd do that for me, though, if I'd make you more mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Grate the oranges, that's funny. Could be your job. <laughs> well, on to cook supper. Yep. You think the beans are, or the peas? I keep wanting to call them beans. Peas are about done. I don't think they are. I'm going I'm to take them upstairs. I was making a pair of earrings. I don't have to babysit them no more. Go back to making Katie's got to finish her earrings, and I'm going to go finish supper. I've got the pork tenderloin ready to fry. I'm going to whip up my cornbread. I'm using a different kind of cornmeal. Well, I've used it once before, but my friend, Ginger, for Christmas, she got me some Daniel Boone cornmeal. It's self-rising, so it's already got the leavening in there, but it's really good. And I've never heard of it, but one of her friends told her about it. And her and uh, her family goes to Booneville, I think it's Booneville, North Carolina, and buy it like by 25-pound bags or 50-pound bags. So it is really good. It's a little bit more coarse than what we usually use. So that makes a difference like in the texture, but it has a really, really good taste. Get my, I've got my pan heating in the oven, so I need to get it out. I think that's the secret to good cornbread is a hot pan. You can hear it sizzle. That's when you know it's going to be a good cake of cornbread. It'll take the cornbread about 20 minutes to cook and that'll give me just the amount of time I need to fry up the meat. looks really good. I need me a plate. Crumble up my cornbread for the black eyed peas. Get some of the wonderful liquid. That's the best part to me is that liquid, the pot liquor and the cornbread. so excited that we had some onions in the garden. Definitely want one of them. And I went downstairs to hoping I'd find a jar of pickles. I found one, a jar of bread and butter pickles from 2022. Last year I did not make, I didn't get to make bread and butter pickles. I made um, dill pickles. And I think that's the only, and kraut, I made kraut, but that's the only, only things I made. I hope this year, that's one thing I want to do in 2024 is be able to put up more things. I'll get me one of the little pork pieces. Maybe I'll move it over there and then get me some greens, mustard greens. Matt likes to put lemon juice or vinegar or something like that on his. I don't. I just like them just like they are. Mm, what a beautiful, beautiful plate. I wish you was here to, to eat with me. Thank you for coming along with me today as I enjoyed a really wonderful first day of 2024. Again, I hope that you and your family, that everything in 2024 goes exactly like you want it to. I'm always happy and appreciative when you stop by to help me celebrate Appalachia. And really doing for my family and, and cooking the foods that I've cooked today is really just part and parcel of the Appalachian life.